Basically, my mom was going to get married to this man. Well, they did get married. But before they got married, they decided to do everything that they were supposed to do. They didn't sleep with each other. They had a big church wedding. They even went and got tested for STDs. At the STD clinic, they stood in front of each other in front of the doctor. And she said to him, oh, I'm clean. I'm good. I'm tested. I don't have anything. She said the same thing for him. She didn't look at the papers. Thought nothing about it. They get married. They even moved to South Carolina. Tomo. If we both go get tested, right? Why would I not look at the papers? Ain't that much trust in the world. I'm just letting y'all know right now. <laughs> Ain't that much trust in the world. I'm looking at them papers. That's like you cheating. Your girl or your boyfriend don't come up with an STD. So you like, I right, well, since she don't got an STD, that means I'm clean. That's that logic. That's that stupid logic. That was dumb on her part. Mind you, we're originally from Florida. They get married. I don't go with them. I'm like five years old at this time. My mother gets pregnant. And so then she goes into the doctor. She goes into the doctor and they call her back afterwards. She's used to this because she has diabetes. And normally they call you back and say, hey, you have diabetes. You need to be more careful. No. They said to her, hey, you have HIV. She was like, what do you mean I have HIV? I've been with the same man. What do you mean? Mind you, this is 2005. They don't know as much about HIV as they do now. And so primarily that happened with gay couples. But gay people aren't the only people who can get HIV, of course. So she finds this out and she's like, oh my God, what? They also tell her you're pregnant with twins. So she doesn't tell anybody for about a month just because she's so stressed and like, you know, she's in shock. And so she finally tells him. And the first thing he says is, please don't tell anybody. And he also told her, like, no one else will love you. You have to stay with me, all this crap. Oh. She calls my grandparents. They come and get her. She takes everything she came into that marriage with. And the only thing she left him with was a microwave. Period. Period. I ain't gonna lie. She should have took his life. What you mean nobody else is gonna love me? All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm going overboard. But what the... F <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. That... that that part got me. What you mean nobody else is going to love you? She comes home and she tells a few family members. And so my aunt calls her and is like, hey, turn on the news. There's a story on the news where one person knowingly infected the other person with an STD. And they got prison time because it's illegal. So then she realized, hey, this is a crime. And so we have a family friend who's a police officer. He tells him and he's immediately like, Oh my God, like, oh my God, he starts crying. He immediately goes, we need to get him on a two-way call and have him admit it. If he admits it, then we can get him in trouble with the South Carolina laws instead of the Florida laws. And the reason they were trying to get him in trouble with the South Carolina laws is because South Carolina gives a bigger punishment than Florida. Are we shocked? No. So she gets him in this two-way call and they start talking and basically he's being not a good person. Um, but she gets him to admit it. And that's very important. They sent out a national warrant for his arrest. He's from a very small town, Greenville, South Carolina, right? So in Greenville, South Carolina, on the news, they're like, if you slept with this man, you need to go get tested. Why? That same day, the testing line is out the door. Out the door. Everybody's going to get tested because everybody slept with this man. He slept with and knowingly infected over 200 people. Right. Bro, it be y'all sickly, dickly ass. Bro. It be y'all sickly, dickly ass niggas that be messing it up for everybody, son. It be y'all that be messing it up for everybody. 200 people? But at the same time, that means 200 people slept with this man unprotected. What the f Why y'all out here going crazy without no rubbers? I was like, what? Oh my God. 200 men and women. So oh. Not just women, baby. Uh, it's insane. That is a crime. One of the people he slept with was his boss. He worked at a pretty big company. I think it was like B. I don't know. It was a big company. He slept with his boss. The boss went to go get tested and found out she was infected. When she found out she was infected, her partner also found out they were infected, but she didn't talk to him. Like, this woman goes to everybody because she was just so in shock and she needed to process it. Mind you, this is a pretty big deal, you know? 
And so she wanted to process it. She didn't talk to her ex at all. And so we're going to pause that story for a second and jump to now. A few months ago, me and my mother had to go back to Greenville, South Carolina, where most of this took place, and go to court because he hadn't been paying child support for the twins. As we go here, it's just such a synchronistic day. And we're meeting so many people and like just talking with them and having a really good time. We start talking to this one lady and we're like telling her this story because like it's just the vibe to share. It's a very interesting story. So we get to the part of the story that me and you are in right now. And my mom is saying, yeah, he slept with his boss and she found out she was infected. She completely ghosted the guy that she was with just because she was in such shock. And he was also in shock. So this man is just going crazy because it's like, she won't talk to me. I'm also infected. I don't know anything. And so we're telling the lady the story. And my mom goes, yeah, so my ex-husband's boss is walking out of her garage on Mother's Day. The lady that we're talking to, she goes, wait, you mean the lady that walked out of her garage on Mother's Day and her boyfriend shot her to death? Oh my God, that was my aunt. We're sitting here telling this lady this story and then she starts finishing the story for us because the lady, the boss, that that was her aunt. So we're just like, what the heck? What do you mean that was Because I ain't gonna lie, this probably one of the most like, entertaining stories I've ever heard on YouTube. I've lo I've listened to a lot of stories now. The plot twist is crazy. They can make a movie out of this. Like, what? Do you know how small of a world it is? And she was like, yeah, I was young when that happened, so I didn't really know, like, why she passed away or, like, what the true cause of her death was. I just heard that, like, it was a tragedy and he just went crazy and shot her. We had no idea that this was why and it was linked to that case. So we're just like, oh my God, I cannot believe this is happening. And the way everything just connected was literally insane, guys. Like, But basically, the twin's dad, the one who infected my mother, he went to prison for about five years. He's out now and not paying child support, obviously. That's why we had to go to the courthouse. But, but after that, my mom became an HIV advocate. She's really well known on Facebook. And I believe her face is in a bunch of like museums around the country. Oh, and she was so stressed from all of this and from finding out she had HIV that she actually had my twin siblings at four months. They were not supposed to live. Do you know how hard it is to have a baby at four months and keep them alive? It's a miracle. Um, the twins do have disabilities now. Definitely probably as a result of being born too early. My brother has cerebral palsy and my sister has autism. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what happened. We're all living now. Everybody's <laughs> pretty fine. We're, my mom, when she was an HIV advocate, which she technically still is, she'd go around speaking this story to schools, churches, anybody who might want her to come in, you know, speak about it, she's telling people to practice safe, you know, intercourse. And of course, always see the papers if you're going to be with somebody. Do not take their word for it. Oh, the biggest part is the doctor knew that he was lying but couldn't say anything because of the HIPAA Law Privacy Act, which is so crazy to me. But yeah, we got to finish up this, this green juice. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I'm going to go make this and drink it. If you'd like to follow her Facebook, her Facebook is Renee Burgess Lady Bird Live. Just look up the Renee Burgess story on YouTube or Facebook or honestly Instagram and it'll pop up. Thanks for listening. You trying to tell me that the doctor knew that this man had HIV and didn't tell the wife? There has to be a... Damn. No, there has to be like a a, a, a clause in the HIPAA laws, bro. That's not... That rhymes too. That's not cool. I think like the closest I've got to that story is one of my boys was talking to this chick. <laughs> Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, snap. So what about boys are talking to this chick, right? She lives in Germany. And like this man took a he took a flight to Germany. Cause they was talking for like six or seven months, but just texting or whatever. You know, FaceTiming each other, you know, having phone sex or whatever. And so he took a flight to Germany to go see her. And he showed me the picture of her. She's gorgeous. I'm not going to lie. She got them. This man goes to Germany. The first night they chilling together, she says, stop. I got to tell you something. 
So he's like, what? I have herpes. She says, I have herpes. And I'm like, I'm asking, I'm like, oh, so she didn't think to tell you that before you came over here? Before you took a flight, how many ever planes you have to take to Germany? She didn't think of telling you that she had herpes? So I was like, what you do? Because I know what I would have did. My boy, <laughs> my boy said he went on Google to look it up. So you can't have sex with somebody if they have herpes. You just have to make sure that um, when you do have intercourse with them, they're not, um, I forgot the word, like they're not showing, having their symptoms or whatever, like the, the sores or nothing like that. You got to make sure they're not having the sores. And you can have sex with them perfectly fine. So, um, well, <clears throat> I'm not going to say what happened, but you can guess what happened, okay? But that, that situation was crazy. And the story behind how she got it, she got it from her boyfriend. Like, her boyfriend was cheating on her. He got it. He gave it to her. And he basically said the same thing that um this, this guy said when he infected the lady with HIV. He's basically like, yo, you know, it's going to be hard for you to find anybody else, so you might as well be with me. Crazy thing is, she stopped talking to my boy... To go back to her ex-boyfriend. Who infected her with herpes. I found that so funny. And the crazy thing is now. Like when I talk about her. Or we have a conversation about her. I call her the T-virus. Like I was. You know. I laugh at him. I'm like yo bro. Like you really was in love with a zombie. Now I know I, I shouldn't be saying that about anybody who have herpes. And I don't really feel like that about people who have herpes. But I feel like that about her. Because even though she had such a. You know. She was coming, even though she was coming with with the the uh, the herpes baggage, my boy still was falling for her, and he was he was willing to look over that, like he was really falling in love with her, and she still did him dirty. I just didn't understand that, so I make fun of him. I'm like, oh, yeah, you was falling in love with a chick in Germany that was burning. You was ready to walk through that fire. <laughs> all right, I'm done, man. But, yo, in all seriousness, man, make sure you're strapping it up. You're wrapping it up. And, like, don't be trusting people's word for it. If somebody say that they don't got nothing, still, double check, triple check. Because you can't just look at somebody and say, oh, yeah, he looks clean. She looks clean. It doesn't work like that. Let the medical professional decide if that person is clean or not.